Hey, this here is another type of track that I developed. It's about twice as long as most of the gates or tracks that I've shown so far. Uh, just to demonstrate that as long as you use these spin accelerators, you can extend the length of the track pretty much indefinitely. You're not really limited to uh, to a shorter length of track. And you don't really lose any power, as you can see. I'd like to postulate a theory here. There's many people involved in magnetics that have thrown out their opinion of what they believe the holy grail would be to building a magnetic motor. Uh, folks like Robert Calloway believe it's attraction. James Rooney believes it deals with magnetic shielding. Howard Johnson worked with uh, manipulating the spins of the magnets as he worked uh, part through the track, which is similar to what I have going on here. And Tom Bearden, a friend of his, he actually felt that uh, by flipping the spins, as a magnet would run through these spin accelerators here, you could generate an exchange force up to four to five hundred times as strong as the normal strength of a magnet. And that would eliminate your back EMF, sending a jolt through as you would cross these spin accelerators. And by doing that, you continually increase the speed as you jump through each spin accelerator, giving you momentum as you pass through the gate. Now, please excuse the crudity of the drawing here, but let me demonstrate to you what I believe the uh, the real holy grail would be to building magnetic motor. If you can produce a track that would draw a cart into the magnetic field, accelerate it through the track, shoot it out the other end without attracting it back in, this, in my mind, would be the holy grail. Now, you could also achieve the same effect by doing what Howard Johnson was doing. Basically, you cut off the repulsion at the opening ends of the track and the attraction at the end and use the spin accelerators on the sides to increase the speed of the car as it shoots through. Now, if this is greater than the repulsion and attraction on both ends, you can use this and you can arc the geometry and you could build a working magnetic motor. Now that works as a holy grail as well. Either of these processes would definitely be something that you could use to build a rotating magnetic motor. Um, for those that are always wondering why I start out with these flat tracks, basically I do it because Howard Johnson did it and because Robert Calloway also taught me the same thing. If you can't work out your problems with a linear track, trying to jump from that to a rotating model, you either have to be a genius or a fool or a little crazy. It's much easier to work out your problems in a track. And once you get everything worked out, you can arc the geometry or you can uh, place these in segments along a rotating track and you can achieve the desired results that you're shooting for. Now, that being said, uh, let me demonstrate for you what a standard track looks like. This is a skeletal frame track. It's something I came up with, but it's very similar to things you would see on YouTube. Basically, you line this up at the entry point here, let go, and shoot through the end. Now, to a casual observer, you might look at this and think, oh, well, I could arc the geometry into a circle and use this as a, some type of magnetic motor. And if you believe this, you really do not have a strong grasp of how these things work. 
all this really does, there's no magic to it. It would be just like putting two long magnets on the side. Once you get past the repulsion on the entry point, it accelerates out the end. It's not increasing any type of power, giving you anything out of it. It's just simply two magnets, really. Or in this case, a bunch of magnets extended together. But it's the same effect. Now you might think, well, what if I could draw this into, into the gate, shoot it out the other end? Well, that's a very simple thing to test. You can basically add a uh, funnel gate to the opening of this uh, track. Let me show you here. And now it will attract it into the track. Let's see what happens. It just ends as it gets to the uh, exit point. It changes around the way that the magnetic fields work and does not accomplish anything. Now, I see people do this all the time. They come up with some sort of effect and they get all excited about what they've come up with and they think, oh, I can turn this into a magnetic motor. Well, what I've got right here, you notice it doesn't repel. It draws it in, goes to the end of the track. Now, to a novice, that might look like something you could easily use to come up with a rotating motor. But let me show you how you test these things to make sure they work. Obviously, it will attract it in. But, if you can stop it at different points inside of the track and get it to accelerate all the way to the end, then you could use this design to build a rotating magnetic motor. If it does not do that, as this clearly does not, then what you have is a very interesting track that might be fun to play around with, but not something you could actually use as a rotating source of energy. Regardless of how it might look. Just a little tip that will save you some time. And that's why I always start out with a flat track. And that's why I build these out of materials that can easily be disassembled. See what Johnson's track would do. As you hit each spin accelerator, it would shoot a jolt through the magnetic fields and accelerate the cart as it passed each one. Something like that, you could arc the geometry and make a magnetic motor out of it. Or, as I said before, something that draws a cart in and repels it out the other side without drawing it back in after it gets out the other side. And without having any kind of repulsion at the opening of the gate. If it's repelling on this side, or if it's shooting out and sucking it back in, either one of those, it won't work. Now this particular assembly is probably one of the most complex that I've ever built. It'd probably take me 10 minutes just to explain how all the magnetic fields work in here. I've got everything clearly marked so you can get a, a general idea if you study it. It will not work with the neodymium magnets not added to it. Uh, what we're getting here, it doesn't have any of the standard repulsion you get at the opening of a magnetic uh, track. Pulls it right in, and then it stops in the center. There's a uh, sticky spot that runs from these two points. And if you manage to overcome that sticky spot, it shoots right on out of the track the way that it's supposed to. Now 
I've never seen anybody pull that off. You can get it to do both. You're done. All you have to do is arc the geometry, and you've got a working magnetic motor. But probably anybody that has ever built one of these things can tell you that it usually comes down to an inch or two, that they're that close. And close just doesn't cut it. I tried adding to the assembly to get through the sticky spot here. I put on a uh, funnel accelerator here. It's a bit modified, but essentially that's what it is. And I've got the uh, stair bridge under here. When you add the two together, you can get through the sticky spot, but it doesn't accelerate out the end like it's supposed to. When you go modifying these assemblies that way, it really just throws the entire workings off. Throws the magnetic fields out of whack and such. So what we're going to do to rectify this, what people need to learn is you don't hang on to things that don't work. Sometimes you have to start over. There's no point having pieces of track laying around and devices you built that just don't work. Don't be too proud to start over.